Lab 5, Magnetic Breaking with Faraday. The objectives of this lab were to collect observational data of a magnet falling through a conductive tube of aluminum foil, model the magnet slash tube interaction computationally, and compare our computational predictions with our observed data. The results of this lab include average time for the magnet to fall through the tube being 0.724 seconds, with a magnetic dipole of 1.4875 amps times meter squared, predicted time for the model is 0.435 seconds, and with a magnetic dipole of 2.166 amps times meters squared, predicted times match the observed times. The key concepts that we're going to be using in today's lab is Faraday's law, the magnetic force of a looped wire, Newton's third law of reciprocity, and Ohm's law. For this experiment, the system includes the following, the following magnet. The surroundings include aluminum foil tube and the earth. For the experiment, it entails that we're going to be taking the time between when the magnet first enters the tube to, what, to when it exits. Average time interval of our trials were 0 0.724 seconds. Below that is all the data or all the information regarding the tube and the predicted magnetic dipole moment that we're going to be using from lab three. We're going to be using all of this data to help with our computational model. Here's the initial conditions section of our computational model. We, this includes the information from our observational data as well as information about the tube's um, dimensions. Our initial velocity of the ball is, of our magnet, I mean, is going to be zero because it starts at rest. On this slide, we're going to be ca calculating the magnetic field and magnetic flux in our computational model with the equations that we used are visible on the right. This portion of the computational model is a loop that is determining the gravitational force as well as the magnetic force acting on the magnet and it's going to be updating the velocity and position of the magnet as it runs over and over again. Here are the results of the computational model. On the left it is the data or the results from when we use the magnetic dipole moment from lab 3 and on the right is when we use the magnetic dipole moment to get uh, a result that matches our, our, our observational results. Using the magnetic dipole moment found from lab 3 resulted in a simulation predicting that the magnet would take 0 0.435 seconds to pass through the tube, which did not observe, which did not match our observed value. Increasing the magnetic dipole moment to about 2.166 amps times meter squared resulted in the simulation predicting that the magnet would take 0 0.724 seconds to pass through the tube, which is the same as the observed value. This reveals that the magnetic dipole moment from lab 3 is not accurate and the new determined value, value may be more accurate. Possible sources of error include timing inaccurately, air resistance, and friction between magnet and the tube. What of question number one? The magnet would fall more slowly, decrease speed, increase time, because the force from the loop on the magnet would become closer in magnitude to the gravitational force, which in turn would which means that a greater opposing force would be acting upon the magnet, which would decrease the time it, or decrease the speed and increase the time. Well, if number two, the magnet will fall with a greater velocity in the downward direction since the magnitude of the force acting on the magnet is much less than that of the gravitational force, meaning a lesser opposing force is acting on the magnet, which will increase the speed and decrease the time that it takes the magnet to fall. 